Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Year 10 Future Choices event at Burgess Hill Girls. My name's Nikki Donson, and I am the Assistant Head, Pastoral and Boarding, and Head of the Upper School. The evening will begin with a short introduction from me, followed by a wealth of information from our Assistant Head, Head of Sixth Form, Mr O'Brien Blake, regarding the different aspects of career pathways from year 10 onwards as the students move through the upper school and to education beyond year 11. Firstly, a few housekeeping messages. If there is a technical glitch, we will keep going. The event is being recorded and it will be available for you to view afterwards. Following the event tonight, if you do have further questions, then please email me or Mr. O'Brien Blake and we will respond through the normal pathways. The students since their return to school have worked incredibly hard and even though the future academic landscape may be a changing picture for students as they move through the next stages of their education, it is key for us to highlight a few points still ahead in the final term of year 10. I am sure the students have been busy over the Easter break completing the first drafts of the HPQ or higher project qualification. It requires students to carry out research on a chosen topic and the title chosen by the students was signed off by the projects team and as such students have now or will be close to handing in their first draft of the essay. Due to the nature of the independent work for the HPQ the students are developing transferable and core skills to apply in a future workplace, apprenticeship or further study. We hope that the topics they have chosen have led them to become more inquisitive and especially independent learners, a skill that remote learning would have almost definitely enhanced, I expect. Experiencing new methods of study, including planning and reviewing stages of their progress, has hopefully ignited a real passion for a subject area, which might inform future subject choices or careers. Over this next term, and potentially the summer holidays, there are definitely things students can do in order to enhance their profile, not only from their involvement with the co-curricular programme, but also opportunities for work experience, which may now take place virtually. Work experience and engagement with industry will certainly be key for some career choices. And if your daughter wishes to go into a certain area of study, such as veterinary medicine, for example, then it is something that they should potentially be thinking about now. And I am sure Mr. O'Brien Blake will expand on this in more detail later. In order to help the girls with subject choices and future planning, there will be, in late June, two sixth form experience days where the girls will be able to live the life of a sixth former, especially experiencing subjects such as business and psychology, which they will not have tried before as part of the GCSE curriculum, which will help inform those next steps. There will be more information regarding these two experience days later this term. I am now going to hand over to Mr. O'Brien Blake, and I do hope that you enjoy the evening. Thank you. Hello, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Donson. Um, good evening, and thank you for joining us here tonight. Um, as said, I'm here to talk to you about the future, your future, um, future careers, future education, and the skills needed for the workplace, um, and I think it's worth reflecting on the events that surround us at present. You know, we'd have loved to have done this in person. We would have loved to have been speaking to you readily about careers for uh, weeks and weeks, but um, as the pandemic has uh, weaved its way through um, our, our lives, um, that has been denied us. Uh, but in addition, the pandemic has had a significant impact on how young people are thinking and feeling about their future. And I just wanted to draw attention to that at this stage to help um, explain the context of what I want to talk to you about tonight. Um, the pandemic 
um, has affected the decisions made by some applicants to university. Uh, decisions uh, are normally influenced by enjoyment. Students will consider futures that they that are based on subjects they already find interesting and enjoying, and that's a very healthy choice. But increasingly, uh, they are bearing in mind employability as a feature of the courses or um, forms of study they want to take up. UCAS pointed out last month that over 50% of 2020 university applicants have reported that high graduate employment rates have become more important to them since the start of the pandemic. And indeed, I can attest to the experience of the year 13s themselves who are bearing in mind the um, situation in different career pathways when deciding on their university courses. Um, in, in addition to that, uh, graduate earnings by university are studied closely by some students, and you might want to look at that. But it is not everything, and I can attest to that. As a, as a graduate of the two top institutions on that list, um, that certainly wasn't my experience within five years of study. But it could be, it could well be yours. Um, it's worth bearing in mind, in addition, that the decisions um, you are about to make as a year 10 um, as well as opening doors, can close some of those doors. And UCAS pointed this out last month as well. It continues to be a concern in the wider education sector that decisions made early on in a student's um, education prohibit certain steps they might wish to take later on. And that's why an event like this that focuses exclusively on potential career pathways and the things that are necessary for them is so essential. Um, to quote UCAS, they pointed out that some higher education subjects require more forethought than others, and that one in five students had reported that they could not study a, hate, a higher education subject that interested them because they didn't have the relevant subjects for entry. Medicine was the most commonly cited, um, and aside, the subjects required would be chemistry and biology. Students, they said, UCAS said, should be made aware of how choices made in school can affect later options. I, I know that we spoke um, uh, previously about A-level choices. Um, here I want to look at the situation from the other way, take defined career pathways and look at the uh, building blocks of those so that you know what is and is not essential for those pathways. Um, in addition, the experience of the pandemic has um, shown us what we are capable of in terms of our resilience and our uh, savviness with communication technology. And indeed, the skills of the, the future world of work um, are worth emphasizing once more. Employers still readily state that university graduates are not work ready. Um, our intention as a school is to enhance the skills that employers feel that they have to provide students on joining those careers. Um, Employer-led training schemes increasingly emphasize skills that they state are not imparted by the assessment-heavy system of England's schooling. Um, soft skills such as building teams, dividing tasks efficiently, creativity, initiative, critical thinking and collaboration were explicitly highlighted by the World Economic Forum in 2019 as the skills needed for the workplace in the 21st century. And so we will provide as many opportunities as we can to do that, but I do task each and every one of you year 10s to consider these skills and ask yourself, where can you find the opportunities to build them? In terms of meeting the challenges of the 21st century, it is worth bearing in mind that entrants to the workforce in the decade ahead may need to change their career up to six times and that the disruption of the global financial crisis and of the pandemic in the last uh, year and the last decade are experiences that could occur again, um, caused by other factors, but that disruption to the course of a career should be expected and anticipated. And from now until the start of your working life, you must be building the skills and experiences that make you able to transfer easily between different career pathways. Careers do demand much more than just the core academic qualifications. And indeed, as I'll highlight, some might not even ask for those. And as such, bear in mind at all times what are the skills needed for the workplace and what are you doing to build them. Today, I am planning that this is the opening of a conversation with each of you in Year 10 about how you're building those skills. As I mentioned, there is a, a danger with choices made at this stage about further education and the higher education steps you may wish to take afterwards. Careers 
can be closed off. Those doors can close. A huge number of careers are not included on the uh, slides I'm about to reveal. The ones I am highlighting are the ones where decisions made in the years ahead can affect your ability to access them. And that's why I wanted to explicitly draw them out. Um, I will provide with um, a range of different careers an account of what actions you can take now to consider and research them, what A-levels or alternative uh, qualifications you may need in order to access that career, whether an undergraduate degree is necessary and what that degree might be in, what specific or professional qualifications might lie beyond the undergraduate degree, or in some cases instead of it. And um, in terms of the actions now, I will typically emphasize the importance of reading. And because I will, I will also provide explicit reading um, recommendations to you. Now, this PowerPoint will be provided again to you uh, over email, and I will explicitly drive out that list as well. Um, but please do take note, because these are excellent uh, ways to engage with um, some of these pathways. Uh, but do note, um, not uh, sorry, many careers are open about the qualifications required to enter. I'm largely going to be talking about the ones that are quite specific. This is by far not an exhaustive list of potential careers. It is a guideline as to some careers that you may well be considering and what you'd need to do to keep that door open. So to start, I will click this button and we have uh, legal pathways. Um, legal careers uh, range from the uh, highly um, selective pathways such as that into law for barrister and solicitor and um, other supporting pathways in the legal system, including paralegals, and of course the police service itself. It is a legal service, it is, it is the force that upholds the law. Um, and you can see here a, a range of different steps are necessary for each. Those of you who are considering careers in law, note there the uh, necessity for essay-based subjects at A level. It's not essential. Uh, in the sense that one can excel in the sciences and go on to become a successful lawyer. The example I used earlier with Miss Donson was of a, a young chemistry graduate who went on to um, invent a new form of soft serve ice cream before becoming a barrister, eventually an MP, and eventually prime minister. And that person was Margaret Thatcher. Um, but many students these days who um, either study law, sorry, many students who become lawyers either study law as an undergraduate degree or study something that relies on an understanding of a significant amount of material that needs to, to be applied quickly. And so essay-based subjects are common in that. You'll see that the undergraduate degree, um, if it is in law, one does not need to do the GDL. Uh, GDL is the Graduate Diploma in Law. That is also known as the Law Conversion Course, available for graduates of any degree to transition into law. Um, then there are specific stages and steps to qualifying either as a barrister or as a solicitor. Uh, if you want to know the difference, barristers uh, work at the bar, the bar in the court. They argue in front of the judge. They advocate. In fact, that's their name in Scotland. Um, whereas solicitors do not do that. They are uh, more behind the scenes. They, they can be highly advanced in, in, in the legal work they do, but they are not wearing the powdery wigs and appearing in the court. Um, there are supporting positions it's worth bearing in mind, such as the paralegal. There, there's a far more open way to access that career. Any A-levels or any other level three qualification um, and a degree is not necessary but can be helpful. Typically, there is significant on-the-job training for paralegals from two of the paralegal um, official societies, the Institute of Paralegals and the National Association of Licensed Paralegals. You'll, you'll see tonight that many professional pathways have at least two um, major supporting um, services that provide uh, uh, accreditation for workers in that field. Um, paralegal positions, however, can be highly competitive for non-graduates, as many law graduates will work as a paralegal while trying to secure a, a passageway onto the LPC or the BCAT, depending on, on the pathway they want to explore. Uh, a minor aside, the LPC um, for solicitors will soon be replaced by the Solicitor Qualification Exam, the SQE, over the next 10 years, so that might include you. Um, and the police service, the police used to be uh, one of the few professional uh, 
um, careers where a university degree was never required. That is changing, but it is still the case that um, people can enter the police service without a degree. There is significant on-the-job training, and um, there are also replacements for degrees at the same level of qualification, such as uh, an increasing number of degree apprenticeships. For those university graduates who are considering the police, typically they study criminology or criminal psychology, sociology, top topics that tie nicely into um, a study or a, a study uh, tie nicely into the experience of policing the public. Um, again, with all of these, right now as a year ten, if you want to um, give greater consideration to these pathways, there is a wide variety of reading available. But I'm just going to recommend three books in particular um, for those who might consider being a barrister or indeed for any who are interested in the law generally. The Secret Barrister is an excellent first-hand account of the criminal justice system. It is secret because the author is anonymous, because he is quite honest about what he thinks the deficiencies of the system are. Um, the Secret Barrister, in his own words, uh, or her own words, wants to show you what it's really like and why the law really matters. Um, and it is a very, very interesting read. Um, I'd also recommend Tom Bingham's The Rule of Law, um, an account of the concept of the rule of law, a concept you might have come across in your uh, sessions on fundamental British values, because it is a fundamental um, st step within our um, democratic political system. It is essential and uh, it is a, a, a foundation for a fair and just society and, and Bingham lays that out with both a, an account of it in the present and in the past. Um, for those who might want to consider uh, the application of law in, in court cases and, and interesting ways it may have been done in the past, I would recommend Is Eating People Wrong? Great Legal Cases and How They Shape the World by Alan Hutchinson. But this would just be a starting point, but um, if you want to um, explore, have a look at those. Um, next, given the wide-ranging success of creative um, students at our school, I wanted to highlight some of the creative pathways in particular careers that are, are driven by them. And um, I've highlighted their art, design, architecture, music, acting, journalism, and sports professional. Each is quite different from the other, and um, their demands with regards to A-levels and degrees are distinct. Uh, for those who want to um, go on to the higher study of art as part of becoming an artist, there are quite distinct uh, paths in that journey that typically include a foundation degree in art followed by a fine art degree, degree or an alternative. We have a student currently start studying a game art degree, uh, creating the backgrounds and, and the animations for computer games. Um, but many artists um, were not trained in such a, a fashion, so it is not essential. But for careers in the arts, for the application of art to certain uh, parts of, of the working world. Typically, those qualifications are required. Uh, the same is true of design, um, DT, art, textiles, good A-levels to choose, and then a design degree. Architecture is uh, the most distinct of pathways here in that it has a, a particular institute that oversees the teaching of architecture at universities. RIBA is written there, the Royal Institute of British Architects. And if you want to become an architect, you must study a river validated architecture degree, and they are longer than most other degrees by one or two years. Um, and a journey through um, river um, degrees and uh, master's programs is necessary for you to call yourself an architect. It is a legally protected uh, job title in the United Kingdom. Um, for journalism, that is increasingly becoming a, a career for university graduates, but it was not always, and it may well uh, not remain. There are um, a range of apprenticeships at level three and above that provide access into journalism and uh, do it, as many journalists would call it, the, the good old-fashioned honest way, through local media, where many um, of the best journalists cut their teeth, um, although postgraduate journalists typically look for large national um, careers in, in uh, newspapers or, or television, um, and increasingly online, of course. Um, and sports professional, um, of course, if you want to become a high-quality, world-leading sports professional, the only thing that matters is your capacity to excel at your sport. But uh, if, alongside that, you do seek to upskill yourself as an expert in sports science, potentially coach in the future, as many leading sports figures do, 
um, a sports science degree um, is worth considering. And um, A-levels that support that, PE, perhaps biology, uh, but there are other level three qualifications that do that. In terms of actions you can take now for these careers, uh, get creating for the creative ones. Um, I'm sure you already are. Uh, for architecture and for journalism, work experience is an excellent idea. And if you talk to us, we can help identify opportunities and indeed for many of these wider reading. And I've recommended some here. For those of you who are considering the creative field, uh, The Art of Creative Thinking by Rod uh, Judkins, where he distills a lifetime of expertise into a succinct and surprising book that will inspire you to think more confidently and creatively. I am quoting his own blurb, but the book is very well received. Um, in How Buildings Learn, Stuart Brand provides a, a, a thorough account of modern interpretations of architecture and how buildings are built once, but they change remarkably across uh, their working lives. You just think about our own school and how, how rooms and buildings are put to different purposes at different stages. Um, and this book is a, is a radical proposal to adopt a, a changing vision of how buildings are used. Um, the uh, rather uh, interestingly titled The Corpse Had a Familiar Face is a Pulitzer Prize-winning book by Edna Buchanan of her exploits as a journalist for the Miami Herald in the United States and is considered by many over here in the UK as an excellent introduction to the work of a journalist. And Bounce by Matthew Said is uh, heavily recommended for anyone who wants to understand um, the, 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 what it takes to become a champion and be a winner in sport. Um, and so those are creative and ancillary pathways. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about public service. Um, obviously, careers here very close to my heart as a, as a teacher of economics and politics. Um, and I have indeed put up the top there, politician, for, for some of you. Maybe that is a uh, hope. Uh, uh, a small aside here, of course, politicians used to come from all um, layers of society and, and all different backgrounds. Sadly, that is no longer the case. There does tend to be a dominance of career politicians, uh, but it need not always be so. So do bear in mind that um, anything can provide a background for representing your fellow citizens in a political uh, position. Uh, but bear in mind that if you wanted to work um, behind the scenes in politics, typically the study of politics is advisable. Um, I've included here the fire service. I would have included the police, yet we've already spoken about them. Uh, the fire service um, does not require any particular A-levels, um, but it does rely on skills tests that rest on uh, English and uh, math skills uh, accrued at GCSE. Um, and then there are greater qualifications that the service can provide to anyone who wants to work with them, um, including membership of the, um, let me just get this right, the Institute of Fire Engineers, that's the IFE, and those who drive the fire engines, that's the job we all want, um, a HGV license. Um, there are also uh, pathways into the higher echelons of Britain's public service by way of the civil service fast stream. That is a, explicitly a pathway for um, university graduates. And um, there are different pathways one might want to consider. There is the generalist pathway, where uh, any A-levels and um, any degree can provide a, a foundation for, for launching uh, a career there. And indeed, um, with any degree as a background, it doesn't need to be A-levels that one studies preceding that. Any level three qualification, BTECs or alternatives, um, are, are, are um, acceptable for that pathway. For the civil service fast stream um, diplomatic service, skills with languages are essential. And um, every year we have a, a number of students who, who want to marshal their skills with languages here in the school into potential futures with the diplomatic service. And it is always very, very uh, welcome to be able to support them with that. Um, A-levels in languages at least one, um, perhaps a degree in a language, not essential, but helpful. Um, because a uh, language acuity will be tested on application to that. Um, if you're not really sure what the diplomatic service does, that's where ambassadors come from. If you want to represent Britain, the international stage as an ambassador, um, you would do so via the diplomatic service. Um, and of course, there's teaching. What better way than to give your time and energy to the young? They really relish it. Um, no, of course, it's, it's a, a wonderful, wonderful career. But worth bearing in mind, your A-levels um, may tailor the subjects that you are then able to teach, but not necessarily so. Um, 
if you're if you want to become a teacher, you will need a degree. Um, secondary school teachers typically have a degree in the subject they then go on to teach, and they secure a postgraduate certificate of education to become teachers. Uh, primary school teachers uh, can do the same with a PGC that specialises in primary education, but you can also study primary education as an undergraduate degree, and so end your undergraduate degree as a qualified teacher. Typically those degrees have with QTS stated in their title, with qualified teacher status. Um, with any of these um, careers, I would always recommend a, a full and thorough engagement with the institutions that govern us. Um, the, the sadly now late Anthony King was a, a giant of political science in the United Kingdom, and his 2014 book, Who Governs Britain, remains the go-to guide as to how Britain's political institutions function. Uh, an excellent um, accompanying book I'd recommend with that is Sig Abel's How Britain Really Works, almost written as an answer to, to such a tome as, as King's book. Um, Abel is the uh, editor of the Times Literary Supplement, so a, a generalist with a, with a really keen wit in writing about Britain's institutions, not only political but social as well. His account of the development of Britain's education sector is one of the finest in print. Um, I, for those who might consider the uh, international diplomatic pathway, I would recommend Jared Diamond's Guns, Germs and Steel. And in fact, I'd recommend that book to anyone who loves geography and seeks to go further with it. It, is, um, it, it fundamentally altered the way we understand um, history by applying, by, by applying biogeography and anthropology to how we understood the past, explaining that it was guns, germs and steel that largely accounted for European success after 1500. A fascinating, fascinating text. Um, so yes, and I, I'd recommend all three of them go nicely together. Now, another popular career pathway, and one I've highlighted already in terms of how easy it can be to close the door on those opportunities, are the various medical pathways. Those of you who have given thought to uh, studying medicine uh, may know the, the, the potential outcomes of that. You can become a surgeon, uh, a general practitioner, and a range of other positions. I've highlighted those two because of the distinct pathways available after the five-year medical degree that are available on the screen, but there, there are uh, a multitude of other positions. Um, the medical degree explicitly requires chemistry as an A-level and, and increasingly requires biology. So if that is something you want to consider, do bear that in mind. Some sources online may stipulate a third A-level of a particular sort. They might say a science or maths. It is not nearly so straightforward. Some of the best aspirant medics have alongside those scientific A-levels a humanities subject to evidence their capacity to think ethically uh, and draw on a wide range of information to make decisions. Um, of course, dentistry and veterinary science, uh, or sort of veterinary practice, are two very similar pathways there. Uh, far quicker qualification after the degree there, but still with a five-year degree and still with a necessity for um, chemistry and biology, except with veterinary science, they, they are less specific about chemistry uh, and tend to emphasize biology, but, but again, a five-year degree. But there are other courses and, and futures and careers in the medical field available. Uh, pharmacist uh, is a popular choice with our graduates uh, resting on um, A-level, uh, including chemistry, but also other level three qualifications can support an application for a degree in pharmacology. It's a four-year degree, and afterwards there is typically one year of training before someone becomes a pharmacist, that training typically within a pharmacy. Uh, but there is also a paramedic. Perhaps you want to be the one in, largely in green, that saves the day. Um, that requires a, a distinct degree pathway um, or an alternative uh, level four qualification that is the same, uh, the same caliber as a degree um, that trains up paramedics. A-levels biology recommended, but other level three qualifications can support it as well. Um, physiotherapy, a popular career choice for some of our students always. Um, biology or PE are recommended A-level and then a, a, a physiotherapy degree. Nursing, uh, a bit like uh, with police, as I mentioned before, was previously largely a career that did not include a university degree. But in the last decade or so, uh, the government has, has built a, a clear and distinct career pathway that relies on a nursing degree. 
Um, but access to that degree can come through A-levels or through any alternative level three qualifications, such as BTECs. Um, but it is worth bearing in mind uh, something uh, with biology would assist. Uh, indeed, also, it doesn't have to be a degree at a, uh, at a university for three to four years. It can also be a degree apprenticeship, a longer process whereby the student earns money um, experiencing the job from the very beginning and receives a degree at the end of that process. Um, and midwifery, a very, very similar balance there. Opportunities for a degree based on A-levels, opportunities for degree based on other level three qualifications, and opportunities for degree apprenticeships that take longer but provide for pay. Um, with all of these, again, wider reading. So some of the examples of wider reading I'd recommend. This is Going to Hurt by Adam Kay, a a hilarious and rather worrying account of his experiences being a junior doctor. Um, Bad Science by Ben Goldacre, a recommendation for any aspirant scientist. Um, he points out the pitfalls and problems of popular understanding of science. Um, but for all, anyone who's considering one of these degrees, Bad Pharma by Ben Goldacre is probably more important. Here he uh, takes the pharmaceutical industry to task in a, in a, in a powerful uh, uh, and thorough text. And um, for anyone considering uh, nursing, I would uh, recommend, I wasn't strong like this when I started out, True Stories of Becoming a Nurse, um, edited by Lee Goodkind, largely reliant on um, American experiences, but it is a collective text with uh, nurses uh, remembering a variety of different experiences they may have had and, and can provide a, a thorough accounting of what that experience will be like. Um, Perhaps you're sitting there thinking, these, these are all well and good, but um, like Jerry Maguire, you are, you are thinking, show me the money. Um, there is, of course, the financial pathway. These are uh, hugely interesting and fulfilling careers, um, and uh, many young people aspire to them because they can also be... Uh, uh, they, they can also be very rewarding financially, given they, they focus on the financials. There's an enormous range of different financial careers that are possible. And I, I've, I've only highlighted some, but some of the careers that are most popular. What is most worth bearing in mind here is the prevalence of maths as a requirement in those A-levels. Um, the only one where I haven't stipulated it as a requirement is management consultancy. Management consultants typically support businesses in improving um, how they operate in a variety of different ways. And uh, management consultants can come from a variety of different degree backgrounds, but typically with a degree. Um, but normally, quantitative degrees will help that career, whereas with other, the other careers on this list, quantitative degrees, and that means degrees that work with numbers, maths, finance, economics, accounting itself, physics, are, are increasingly essential. These, um, these careers need to see that you are confident and capable manipulating mathematical data, and um, they will reward you for it. So if that is um, a hope for the future, the, the only thing you need to bear in mind is that maths is important when those A-levels are chosen. And typically, it is going to be A-levels and then a degree that provides that foundation. Um, if you are not sure what these careers look like, which may well be the case, the book I'd recommend is The Amazing The Money Machine by Philip Coggan, um, subtitled How the City Works. The city is, of course, the city of London, the square mile in the center of uh, of larger, greater London, where most of Britain's financial businesses, sorry, uh, financial services are based. Um, this book provides a, a, a detailed and accessible account of different aspects of the financial services system, and it is very, very interesting, and I heartily recommend it. Um, I'd also recommend any of the works of Charles Whelan. He is a, an economics professor at the University of Chicago, but don't let that think, don't fool that into, don't let that fool you into thinking these texts will be tomic and misunderstandable. No, they are written for high schoolers in the United States and so exceedingly accessible to our British students. Um, Naked Money is a, is a thorough account of, of uh, money and finance and how those systems operate, indeed how money came to be, and it is truly fascinating. But he also has the other brilliant texts, Naked Economics and Naked Statistics. For those of you who are definitely thinking of careers in this pathway, I would heartily 
recommend both. Uh, for those of you that want to understand um, the financial services sector at work um, and potentially at, at one of its worst moments, Aaron Ross Sorkin's uh, Too Big to Fail. Aaron Ross Sorkin is a, is a journalist of the financial services. I believe he writes largely for The New Yorker. This is a thrilling account of how the global financial crisis occurred. And as well as being um, gripping page to page, it cannot help but inform you how much of the financial services sector actually works. And I, I heartily recommend it. Um, and in fact, these three texts are all available from my office if you would like to borrow them. Um, there may be aspirant engineers amongst you. Um, as you can see here, there are many commonalities with um, engineering pathways, and many students who might aspire to engineering don't make a decision about which kind of engineering until they're in year 12 and considering applying, apl applying to university, such as our deputy head girl, Birdie, who has applied for electrical engineering, she wants to invent better electric cars. But she could equally have excelled with many of these other um, courses. Um, but do note that for chemical engineering, chemistry will be a necessity, and for software engineering, computing um, is, is required. Um, if any of these futures are um, ones you'd like to consider, bear in mind the work experience and the wider reading, but also I advise competitions, scientific competitions. They're out there. The departments are, are always keen to highlight them, always keen to support you in them. Take the chance. Uh, build those skills. Build on top of what you're already doing in your GCSEs. Show evidence that you can apply your scientific understanding in other fields. Um, texts you may want to um, consider. Stuff Matters, exploring the marvelous materials that shape our world by Mark Miodownik, um, a thrilling book about some of the most ordinary of uh, building materials. He manages to make concrete fun, uh, and that is, that is amazing. Uh, I heartily recommend it. And then uh, Simon Winchester's Exactly, How Precision Engineers Created the Modern World. Uh, he takes a stage-by-stage -stage approach to the increasing precision of tool making in human history, and uh, it is a, a fascinating account of all that engineering has provided for us. Uh, my final um, pathway I wanted to highlight is the one that is probably increasing at the fastest rate. It is IT. Um, it has been a major feature of our, our working lives for decades now, but uh, we are increasingly reliant on it. And of course, the experience of lockdown and virtual learning and virtual work has made us all the more um, interactive with it. Uh, but some of these positions are, are always sought after. They are quite um, different. And uh, indeed, you'll note that um, of all the pathways I've spoken about tonight, this one has the most that don't necessarily require a degree. The key in information technology is always experience. And you can start building that experience yourself right now if you are a particular fan of programming uh, in a certain programming language, perhaps learn others, perhaps um, make your programming more complex and complicated. Consider competitions that relate to that and take a look at online courses. There are many out there that can upskill you in your, in your work there. Um, the IT manager positions, um, although they, they do favor and, and, and rely on understanding of, of computer technology, they're not, as, they're not necessarily as reliant on an understanding of program, programming as these other positions. The one at the top there, cyber security analyst of, inc an analyst of increasing importance in today's world as businesses seek to um, take intellectual property from each other, as governments put more and more money into um, cyber attacks. Um, cyber security analysts are, are always popular. In fact, the government is, is desperately trying to expand the number of them that it has as we speak. If these are pathways you'd like to consider, texts I would recommend would be code, the hidden language of computer hardware and software, using everyday objects and familiar language systems such as Braille and Morse code to explain the inner life of computers and other smart machines. And once upon, a, once upon an algorithm, how stories explain computing. This, this helped explain some features of computing to me. Um, it uses the common tropes of storytelling to explain how algorithms operate and what they intend to do. And, and a book I didn't put up there that I do really enjoy is a study of the Apollo 
Mission Computer, uh, which is an amazing study in what was possible in the 1960s with basic computer languages. Those are the pathways I wanted to talk about. And as I said before, this is far from an exhaustive list. This is an in indication of some of the pathways that require active decision making from students in the years ahead about the things they need to do to keep these doors open and uh, make these careers viable. These reading recommendations are open to, of course, anyone, even if you've not considered those pathways before. They are heartily enjoyable texts and eminently accessible. Um, so what I wanted to talk about next was, further to what Mr. Johnson said at the beginning, what happens next? I am um, going to um, organize an opportunity to meet with all of you uh, in year 10 for a one-to-one uh, -one meeting about your thoughts on careers, about what it is you're, you're considering, whether you're considering anything at this stage, what you could be guided towards, what you might want to look at, and um, what you might want to take away with you to help guide the actions you take in the future. I want to identify the tangible steps that could be taken now and suggest the steps that could be taken next. Um, of course, year 10 exams are, are in um, early to mid-June, but after that we have the sixth form experience days. Um, now we know that our year group isn't necessarily going to all take A-levels, but uh, having the chance to experience what A-levels feel like is, is an excellent opportunity. And on this day, you will sh on these days you will shadow um, uh, A-level students experience the, 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 the life of a sixth former, the academic life, um, and engage with members of the lower sixth about the thinking they went through and what the decisions they've made, um, the impact those decisions have on their career choices. You'll also receive skills-based career-minded workshops from yours truly uh, that I'm very, very excited about. It's a version of, of um, graduate recruitment um, workshops I've, I've done for the... Um, lower sixth in the past, and, and they are perfectly in line with how many uh, employers um, select their candidates these days, so those experiences are hugely valuable. Now, I don't know how closely you watch the news or are attuned to um, headlines that involve the word UCAS or university application, but I am, when I see those words, the heart goes a flutter, and yesterday was one such day, but I want to put your minds at rest. UCAS uh, the university uh, application system has been engaged in a, a thought process uh, about reimagining how UK university students, sorry, how UK universities take students and how students apply for universities. And yesterday they released their plans for uh, the first post results university application model that, that uh, England has effectively had for many, many a year a post qualification offer model. Two caveats though, it doesn't move the start of the university year, which was considered necessary for the system to work. It simply truncates the last stage of the student's decision making until after A-level uh, results day. Um, and also it will not come about until 2024. So unless you take a gap year, um, you won't apply in this app, uh, uh, under this system. And if you do take a gap year, you've already got your A-levels by that point anyway. So if you um, see these headlines and you, you further engage with them, rest assured they're not yet going to affect your year group. If that does change, if they suddenly bring that timetable forward, I will be the first to let you know. But I've got, I've got my eye out um, because that is quite a significant alteration to how that process is done. But of course, for those who are with us at that point, we will support you through every step of the way. Um, now, I am keen to talk to any and all parents who would like to about post-GCSE options, about how that uh, plays into higher education applications, and, and about how all of those questions of further and higher education relate to careers choices. So if there is more you would like to ask, if there are particular questions you have about the situation you are in, um, that, and, and for students too, I am more than happy to do so. Just please, please do get in touch. And of course, given our comfort with virtual communication, it can all be done much more easily now via a GMeet. Um, so just let me know and I will gladly be in touch. Um, and that's it from me here this evening. Thank you so very much for joining me. And um, I look forward to talking to each of the Year 10s very shortly in turn about your career ideas. So start thinking if you haven't yet. I'd like to thank Miss Donson for being a wonderful co-host and for introducing me earlier. 
And um, uh, just leave it with me to say uh, good night and uh, have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much.